Hey everyone, it is Danny, and welcome to this update video this morning. I trust and hope you're doing well and we're going to be taking a look at what is going on across the Caribbean. So there is Disturbance 97L, uh, that is an invest and invest is an area of investigation which means it's being closely watched for development. And then we see that big cluster of activity in the vicinity of some of the Northern Caribbean islands and that has prompted a flash flood watch for portions of Jamaica. So I will be going into that as well. And then over in the Eastern Pacific, there is Pilar, uh, which is still offshore, producing some activity. So let's get straight into it. And we're going to be kickstarting things looking at this disturbance. So this is Invest 97L. There you can see it. So the formation chance remains at 60%. It has been constant for the last few updates. And so this is going to be drifting toward the West, but some of the associated activity could make its way into the Northwest Caribbean, affecting portions of the Yucatan and even for the Bay Islands of Honduras and Honduras itself, potentially even Nicaragua as well. So as we head into the latter part of this week, going to Friday and Saturday, a lot of activity, a lot of moisture is going to be within this area. And regardless of it actually developing into a tropical cyclone or not, it is going to be producing a lot of heavy rainfall uh, potentially triggering floods across some areas. Now let's see what models have to show here. We're going on to the track guidance and not a lot of models are available. So I see the decline in the amount of models on this graphic here. So we can see that all of them, though they generally agree with that track for the short term, the system eventually making its way into uh, Central America, that one showing a curve up. We'll see how that goes. And then as it relates to intensity, we can see that majority of them are showing that we will see the system making it to tropical storm status, maybe even a hurricane, but I'm not so confident on a hurricane at all. I mean, a tropical storm is still possible, but I have my doubts about that. However, I'm not expecting a hurricane to become of the system, at least not right now. Going to the satellite imagery, going back to it, there we can see that it is not sustaining a whole lot of activity. Uh, conditions will only be marginally conducive to allow for development because uh, in terms of the wind shear forecast, the shear is likely to increase as the system makes its way toward the west. And that will really pack a punch in terms of its development because that helps to inhibit all those thunderstorms from really consolidating and uh, getting something intensifying out there. However, if it decides that it wants to take advantage of uh, any conducive conditions it encounters, then we could see something try to rapidly get itself together, especially with those very warm waters out there. That is still uh, the case for the Caribbean. There's still those very, very warm waters. So, so that's what's going on with 97L. And as we look at the satellite imagery here, we can see that over in the Eastern Isles, not a whole lot is going on for Trinidad, Tobago. There's some activity moving in from Venezuela that may result in some overcast skies, maybe even some uh, intermittent showers as well. But then going to uh, Barbados and through the Lesser Antilles, we're not seeing where much is happening. Going to the Virgin Islands, Puerto Rico, same story. Also the case as we head toward the Dominican Republic. Down in the ABC Islands, there we're seeing that uh, because the disturbance is close by, a lot of activity is being induced. So some periods of some heavy downpours and even some thunderstorms are within the area. So the islands of Aruba, Curacao, and Bonaire see a lot of moisture over in Central America, some of which is in association with Pilar. Not a whole lot happening for the Cayman Islands as well as for Central and Western Cuba. Now there we see that big cluster in the vicinity of Jamaica going toward Cuba and Haiti. Now what is causing it? Well, that low pressure area which was previously marked as a disturbance last week, not expected to develop into a tropical cyclone. However, because it is in the area along with a trough, there is a lot of instability. That's why we're seeing so much activity being produced here. And these are low pressure areas. So what happens is that there's a lot of warm moist air uh, which is rising within the area. Once it rises, it cools and condenses to form clouds and then eventually these clouds grow and uh, we can see thunderstorms and all that heavy rainfall being produced as a result of that activity. So that's what's happening here right now. And even as we look at the surface chart, there we can see that L actually right at the top of Jamaica and there's that broken orange line indicating that trough and that other L right there is associated with Invest 97L. So it is going to be a pretty wet couple of days for not only Jamaica, uh, well, parts of Jamaica because uh, the entire island experience those inclement weather conditions, but uh, going to parts of Jamaica, even going toward Cuba, and even sections of Haiti and 
St. Mary, going to Portland, St. Thomas, Kingston, and St. Andrew, and St. Catherine. Now, this is effective until 5 p.m. today. What does this mean? So, within this time frame here, as we head through today, there could be those periods of very heavy rainfall which trigger flooding across those flood-prone areas. And so, guys, uh, please be safe as you go through today because we know that floods are very dangerous. And if you should encounter flood waters, please do not attempt to cross, turn around, don't drown. Now, as it relates to the rainfall activity expected through today for the Caribbean, uh, this is the Euro forecast we're taking a look at. And as it becomes more colorful with those shades of reds and oranges and purples, even those pinks, a lot of heavy rainfall is likely. So going over into the eastern islands, uh, we weren't seeing a whole lot happening on satellite imagery, but there could be some showers moving through some areas today from the main development region. For Puerto Rico, going to the Virgin Islands, not a whole lot is expected, but there could still be some showers making their way through here and there. Similar story as we head to Barbados, Trinidad and Tobago and for portions of the Guyanas as well. As we head into portions of Venezuela, especially western Venezuela and for Colombia, there could be a lot of heavy rain and even for the ABC Islands. So with Invest 97L being in the area, there's a lot of moisture so there could be more of those thunderstorms and even those heavy downpours at times. As we head through to Central America, especially going uh, to the coast of El Salvador, that's where Tropical Storm Pilar is We'll talk more about it in a moment and even in the vicinity of uh belize just offshore of belize go into the island of ambergris key and even for sections of northwest honduras we're seeing some of those pink and purple shades uh indicating that a lot of heavy rainfall is expected there even going over into the bay islands of honduras so there's likely to be those flood triggering rains across those areas and even elsewhere across central america as we head to the vicinity of the cayman islands and even even going towards central and western Cuba, we're not seeing where much is expected. There could still be some showers popping up here and there, but uh, nothing too crazy expected. Then as we head to eastern Cuba, as well as Jamaica, Haiti, and even over into some spots in the Dominican Republic, the southern Bahamas, and the Turks and Caicos Islands, a lot of heavy rain. Again, there's that trough and that low pressure in the region. So that is going to be helping to induce a lot of heavy rainfall, which may trigger flooding there. Now let's head on to Pilar. So we're looking just offshore of Central America right here over in the Pacific side there you can see the tropical storm it is still producing some activity in the vicinity of the uh, different countries there and looking at the cone forecast we can see that yellow shading or that yellow marking still indicating that tropical storm watch now this watch has not been upgraded to a warning why because this watch is speaking toward the possibility of tropical storm conditions and then we can see that mustard shading indicating the extent of tropical storm force wind so we can see that that is remaining offshore for now and the system will gradually make its way out but there is still some periods of heavy rainfall across sections of Central America under that watch. So for the coast of El Salvador going toward uh, the Pacific coast of Honduras and northwest Nicaragua, even for southern Guatemala, there could be some activity within the area as well. But again, conditions will gradually improve as the system makes its way out for the area. However, 97L is on the way, so it will be moving in this weekend, potentially increasing that rainfall chance for some areas. But in terms of uh, Pilar's intensity, it is sustaining winds at 60 miles per hour at the maximum. Maximum. So uh, that is likely the peak intensity of the system. But even if it should strengthen anymore, it is going to remain offshore and eventually make its way out to the southwest and then the west. So guys, that is pretty much what I wanted to share in this update. Again, there's that flash flood watch in effect for Jamaica, as well as uh, other areas could experience those flood and rain sections of eastern Cuba, Haiti, the Bahamas, Turks and Caicos Islands, and then 97L, which may try to get itself together. It still has that chance to develop. Let's see how it does so through today and even into tomorrow as well. But that's it for now and i hope you found this video to be quite informative but if you have any questions please do leave them in the comments i'll respond to you once i can and remember to always be weatherwise